So before we give the lecture and the video outlines, we will jump to the main point. So in this video, you will learn how to simulate a deformation of a thin plate under the action of a static force. So here you can see the animation of our simulations. So we have a thin plate whose edges are fixed or in solid mechanic terms constrained. And then we have a vertical force F acting at its center. Now, if we observe the out of the plane deformations of an arbitrary point A and these deformations are denoted by Z, in time Z will oscillate when a static force is acting on the system. Of course, this is not completely realistic simulation because in practice we always have some form of damping acting on the system. However, for brevity, for presentation clarity, we didn't include the structural or some other type of damping. So here is the presentation outline. First, we're going to talk about problem formulation. So we're going to introduce a plate with forces and we're going to talk about uh, initial and boundary conditions. Then we're going to explain how to simulate such deformations using Combs or Multiphysics package. We're going to define the parameters. We're going to explain how to compute stresses and deformations and how to generate results, that is, plots and animations. First, we define a problem we are trying to solve. We are considering a thin plate and we are assuming that its edges are constrained. That is, its edges are fixed. Next, we assume that there is a vertical force acting at the center of the plate. This is a view of the system from a certain angle and if you look at the side view we will see a plate and its edges are constrained. The force is acting at the center of the plane. Let us denote the force by F. We assume that the F is a static force. Now, the main question is how this plate will deform when the static force F is acting on the system? Well, obviously, at certain fixed time instant, the deformation will have the following form when seen from the side view. From the angle view, the deformation will look like this. However, but what happens in time? How the deformation will look as a function of time. That is, we are asking the following question. For an arbitrary point A, we are interested to see how the deformation, vertical deformation of this point, which, will, which we will denote by Z, will behave in time. So, if this is the graph, T is time, and Z is the vertical or out of the plane deformation of the plate, we are interested how Z will behave in time. Will it oscillate or will it have a damped response? For the presentation clarity and simplicity, we will assume that this system is completely undamped. That is, there is no internal or external damping acting on the system. The internal damping can be a structural damping and the external damping can be due to the air, due to the environment and due to the actuators. Of course, this assumption is not fully justified by uh, real life experience because we know that most of the systems are damped. Now, what is interesting here and what 
is kind of the outcome of the whole of this video is basically that you can model the deformation of such a thin plate as a mass and a spring system where the force F is acting. Of course, this is a very crude approximation. This is a very crude approximation and this is valid only for a single point here. However, engineers often use these kind of approximations to get some feeling about how the real system will behave. Now we will explain how to simulate the deformation of the thin plate using the Comsol Multiphysics software package. So here is the main menu of the Comsol Multiphysics software package. We click on the model wizard. Now we have to select basically a, a domain. So in our case, since the plate is thin, we are select the 2D domain. And we need to select physics. So under the structural mechanics physics uh, menu, we need to select the plate physics. So, and if you read the description, the plate interface provides the ability to model structural plates in two dimensions. Plates are thin, flat structure with significant bending stiffness. So this is an important uh, uh, statement. So it's significant bending stiffness. What does it bending sti stiffness mean? That's something to, that we will, we will discuss in our next videos. But there is a big difference between a plate and a membrane. A membrane doesn't have a bending stiffness. So we select the plate, we select add, and we click on study. But actually, before we click on study, it's important to analyze. So what is basically, what are the variables here? So we have a displacement field. Displacement field components have U, V, and W. So you can see a Cartesian, uh, Cartesian coordinate system. And we also have displacement of shell normals, but we are going to discuss about this thing in our next video. So when we click on study, and we have to select the type of study we are conducting. We are not conducting agent frequency and frequency domain studies, which are also very important from a mechanical uh, engineering point of view. We are going to talk about time dependent studies since we are interested how the plate will deform in time. So we click on the time dependent study and we click on done. And the next screen is the main console screen. So we have several options here in the model builder. There are several uh, parameters that you can define. You can define the parameters, you can define geometry, materials, uh, boundary condition, mesh, and study. Our first step is to define the problem geometry. In our case, uh, the domain is uh, a circle. So we'll click on geometry, right click, and we're going to click on circle. And here you define a circle. In our case, we're just going to keep the radius one meter and we're not going to change any of the default parameters. So we're going to click on build selected. So here is our 2D main, 2D domain. The next step is to define a point at which the force will act. So we click on geometry, we click on point and we are going to keep it as it is since the point is acting at the center point of the plate so the point is zero and zero and we're going to click on build selected the next step is to define uh, is to define the boundary condition in our case the outer edge of the plate will be fixed so we have to say to console while doing computation computations make sure that the outer edge is always fixed. So we click on plate and here we can select different boundary, uh, boundary conditions and we are going to select fixed constraint. Now, we need to click on the outer edge of the plates. You can notice that COMSOL divides the outer edge, outer edge into the four segments. So we click on these segments. And as, as I click on these segments, you can see that the uh, boundary points are uh, selected over here. So the, the boundary four 
is the boundary over here. So the console has its own internal numbering of the boundary condition. The next step is to say to console that the vertical force is acting at the point zero zero. So how do we define a uh, force? So in the console terminology, force is basically, in our case, a point load. So we'll click on a plate and uh, under the section points, we will select the point load. So we are saying there is a point load, but we need to say where does it act. So we will click on the center point here and over here you can see that this selection is been chosen. Now you need to define the force. So in our case, the force will be uh, force oriented in the negative z direction, and we will choose a force of 100 newtons, which is um, quite a significant uh, amount of force. Now, but what we forgot to define is the plate thickness, right? So we need to define, we need to go back and to define the plate thickness. In this case, the plate thic thickness is 0.01 meter, which is around, uh, which is exactly uh, one centimeter. So we will keep it as it is. And then we are going to um, um, look at the mesh. So the mesh is one of the main components of a finite element method. So uh, Comsol Multiphysics uh, uses a, uh, an amazing method called uh, finite element method for solving its problems. So it basically divides the geometry into segments and uh, it computes the solutions for each segment. More detail about finite element modeling will be, we'll dedicate the whole video on finite element modeling. So you click on a mesh and click build all. So here is our here is our mesh. So what we have defined, we have defined a central force acting at the center of the magnitude of 100 newtons. And we are interested to see how this force will deform the plate. However, we didn't specify the plate material. So let's specify the plate material. So if we click on a material and uh, we click on add material, we have different different options. So I will click on recent material and I will click on structural steel. You can select, of course, other materials from the menu. So and you can see the main um, mechanical properties of a structural seal. You can see the density, modulus of elasticity, Poisson's ratio. These three parameters are the most important parameters for computing the uh, plate deformation. The next step is to compute the time response. So under the section study, we will click on step one, time dependent. And in this menu, we can define basically the time interval and the time steps at which we will look at the plate deformation. So times uh, menu is the most important one. So range means that we start from the time instant zero, we take the step 0 0.1 and the final step is one. In this case, we are going to choose uh, a more uh, refined time step of 0 0.05 and our final time will be let's say five seconds there are other other um, parameters that you can play here with we will not right now discuss these parameters once you define the time step and the total time interval you click on compute and after some time you can see that basically the uh, there's a uh, computation going on, certain equations are being solved, certain matrices are uh, being probably not inverted, probably we have some uh, direct methods going on, uh, and uh, after some time you will, you will obtain the solution. In our case I have a computer with i7 processor and I have uh, 16 gigabytes of RAM, which is a laptop computer. I would say a high performance laptop computer. You see, you see how long does it take to solve a relatively simple problem. And 
after the solution is being computed, which will happen in a few seconds, we will obtain the results. Now, what you can see on this graph is the stress distribution. So these are the stresses inside of the material. We, of course, we see that the high stress as it is at the tip point. These are so-called von Mises stress or von Mises stress, depends on how you pronounce them. We're going to talk about stresses in our next video. However, in this video, we are more interested about deformations. So let us plot the deformations. So if we click with the right click on the results and we click on a 2D plot group, we will obtain a menu. So we are looking at the deformation at the time instant, let's say at fifth second. Now, we click on surface, since we are looking into the surface deformation, and uh, here you should pay attention to the expression. So plate dot this this means displacement of the plate, right, in out of the plane direction. And if you click on a surface and you click on a height expression, you will obtain the deformation. So here is how our plate will deform at fifth second. So what can you observe from the, uh, this graph? You can see that if you have a plate of one centimeter thick and uh, with the radius of one meter, its maximum deformation will be in the order of 10 to the minus four meters. So that's below uh, millimeter that you're, you're talking here about 100 micrometers. Now you should be careful uh, while interpreting COMSOL results because COMSOL sometimes use its internal scaling. So you should be always careful and look, in, look into the scalings. You've used some internal scalings uh, we are going to talk about that in our next uh, next videos. Our next step is to plot the deformation of a single point in time. For that purpose, we are going to create a, a 1D plot group. If we click on a 1D plot group and we click on a point graph, since we are talking about the point, we need to select the point. So in this case, we are going to select the central point. In order to select some other point, you have to go in geometry, you have to define that point, and using this menu, you can select uh, any point you, you wish under the condition that you have previously defined. In this case, it's the point three. We click on the point three, and we click on plot. Here it is. Here is the deformation of the central point in time when the static force is acting. Obviously, the system will oscillate. Here are the oscillations. Although the force is static, the system will oscillate. This is uh, uh, something that probably students who didn't take solid mechanics do not understand a priori. Why the response is like this? Because there is no damping in a system. Usually in real life we have, we have damping. The final step is to create the animation of the play deformation. So we're going to click on, in the menu results on animation and we're going to save it as a file. So we click on the file. Here you save it, uh, you define uh, the file name. In our case it's going to be animation one and you define the, the parameters and once you define the parameters you uh, click on export and the animation will be created so this is the procedure we followed in order to create our animation at the beginning of this video